So what did we decide about A and B? Because when we multiply them together, we get zero. What did we decide? One of them has to be zero. Do they both have to be zero? They could be. They don't have to be, but one of them has to be zero. Why does one of them have to be zero? Because you have zero for an answer. Sally, what do you think? Catching on to that? Yeah. Why does one of these have to be zero? Why? Yeah, why? Because it equals zero and you can't multiply something and have it be zero unless there's a zero involved. Perfect. Unless there's a zero involved, we'll never get zero by multiplying. So now we can multiply one half times two, right? That's never going to be zero. That's one. Uh, just no way to do it. One of them has to be zero. So A equals zero or B equals zero, either one is fine. Well, here's our A. That whole thing is A, the thing that branches in circles. And the second <laughs> one here is B. So this A equals zero, A equals zero becomes y plus 9 would have to be 0. And b equals 0 becomes y minus 1 equals 0. One of those has to be true. And we subtract 9 from both sides to solve this equation. So what we wind up is two different equations that we solve for y. Add 1 to both sides of this equation. So if y is negative 9, or if y is 1, then we get 0. prove it, we verify that definitely we're right about that, because let's just plug negative 9 in for y. Negative 9 plus 9 times negative 9 minus 1. Negative 9 plus 9 is 0 times negative 10, definitely is 0. Zero times negative 10 is 0. The only other way that can happen is if the right parentheses was 0, that'll happen if y is 1, y minus 1 is 0. And there's no other possibilities, there's the only two things being multiplied together are right there, and the only way to get zero is to multiply by zero. Making sense? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Next uh, is number 13. It's snowing or is it raining? Oh my gosh, really? Everyone else? How's that? That was off the movie, right? That was what? That was off the movie, right? Yes. <laughs> okay, so once again, we have, oh, Cameron, <coughs> show us the two things, he's going to circle them for us. Nice. So great is his desire to circle things. <laughs> you can touch it with your hands. Circle the two things, kind of. That second one's pretty good. Yeah. That first one, I'm just going to clean up the first one just a little bit. There's the first one. There's the second uh, one. You had a lot more practice than I did. Just years more. So. <laughs> so there's one thing. That one thing is like A. This other thing is like B. Either A is 0 or B is 0. So we get to set up these two different equations. Imagine the guy who came up with this was pretty pleased with himself. Pretty, it's fairly oh clever. The, from getting from here to there requires a pretty strong statement of logic that one of those things has to be zero. You turn one equation into two equations, and I leave you to solve both of those equations. <laughs> my apologies. Jeez, those are fives. My apologies. My apologies. Okay, so we subtract five from both sides. Two y equals negative five. Divide by two, negative five halves. My five definitely needs some work. I don't think they're going to get any better because I've been working on them for about decades. This is what they look like. Here we're going to add five to both sides to get seven y equals positive five. Divide by seven. Uh, as we learn more, we're going to learn how to turn this kind of 
equation, say this one, right? just start here, turn it into something that looks like this or this, and solve it that way. Which I'm solving by that guy. Just as a quick preview, it would look like this. x plus 2 times x plus 3 equals 0. Then x plus 2 would equal 0, or x plus 3 would equal 0. Taking this and rewriting it. Okay. Um, you ready to show me you can solve these equations? Not these ones, but well, questions here. Are there questions before we start? Yeah. Well, so you got a piece of paper. And first <coughs> equation. We have x minus 2, there's one thing, times x minus 3, there's a second thing, equals 0. So either this thing is 0, or this thing is 0. Add 2 to both sides, x equals 2. Add 3 to both sides, x equals 3. Who wants to explain how to solve this? First, let's set up that equation, right? Yeah, set up that one thing. That one thing equation. Yep, and then? Then you add 5. Add 5, negative 5 plus 5 is 0. You cancel out that 5. Add that and you add 5 to the other side. And you got 2x equals 5. Right. Now you want to divide x by 2. Mm -hmm. So now it gets x alone. Mm -hmm. Now you got x equals 5 halves. Perfect. All right, so the second one, we set up the equation again, turn x plus 1, 0. Figure out what is that x that makes this whole thing 0. Subtract 1 from both sides, x equals negative 1. Divide by 3, x equals negative 1. What do you guys think? Does this make sense? That looks pretty. OK. So like I said, the next step is going to be, it's going to kind of take us into a, a whole other realm where we start factoring these things, and maybe you guys have some experience with that, maybe you don't. Uh, but like, like I said, it's a, it's a whole other thing. Uh, you multiply them together, to undo that and to factor them is a bit of a tricky deal. So what we're going to do today is, uh, since I feel like that's a good round bit of uh, knowledge test, we're going to have a quest next class. Okay, so I'll get you some reviews after I can print them out. Over them and 